The beauty of psalm space is all-encompassing. It's so much bigger than what you or I could ever imagine. We have so much inside of us that we don't even know exists. To know that other people feel this, that you're not alone, that there is help in the world for you. She had called me in her office one of the thousands of times she does, Jason, Jason. You know. <laughs> so, you know, and I'm walking in, I'm like, what does she need me to do? And basically what she needed me to do was listen. And when she played it, you know, I just was like, oh, my. I sat down, you know, and I was just like this. You know, and I was like, oh, my goodness. I thought the, the musical presentation was beautiful. I thought the video was really good too. And there's one other irony I'll point to, and that is the church that that was made in. I was baptized in that church. A long time ago. <laughs> but I was baptized, so I was very struck by the visuals and the music, and it just came together beautiful, and it just reminded me also. So thank you. So, so neat listening to this and, and hearing and seeing what you're doing because I'm going, this is so of God because I know as a child telling my mom, I hear it in my head, mom, which is the scariest thing you'll ever tell a child, a, a mom ever, you know, to hear, from, hear that from your child. I can see that in you and I can see this is embedded in her, you know, this is, this is gifted to her. It is an honor uh, to be a part of what you, you have dreamed and uh, to uh, sense your heart to know that this is not about money, this is about ministering to people who are hurting. And I wanted to thank you for uh, allowing me the privilege of being a part of your, your effort. I think God will honor you for this, and uh, your dream, I hope, will, will uh, be realized. And many, many millions of people will, will hear this and be blessed by it. Yeah, I wanted to speak to you and tell you, everybody a little bit about the process of Psalm Space. The, the key to production and, you know, the writing process, the composition, the, the arrangements, is to complement what's meant to be, you know. It's, it's to bring it to life. So I feel it was my job to get out of the way and try to just let it, become what it was supposed to be. Um, and I, I do realize that every step of the way, which I've said before, we were guided, you know, to do exactly what we did. So I feel like it was divinely inspired. I, I just tried to stay out of the way, you know, and do as much as possible, you know, to bring that vision alive. What happened is, uh, Peg, I met her I had heard uh, her flute masterpieces CD on Centaur Records, which was amazing. And uh, I just had to work with Peg. She started sending me things that she had composed. And then I would mock up all the instruments uh, and play instruments on. I did uh, play the drums, the bass. Uh, I would play orchestral percussion. Uh, I would do some mock kids as well as uh, later to mix them in with real children singing um, and keyboards and synthesizers and all kinds of interesting effects. We, we got the form of the tune, the arrangements down, and then we uh, decided to um, come to Nashville because I, I was telling her how um, Nashville had some really amazing studios and musicians you know, for the orchestras, we decided to choose uh, Ocean Way and uh, the orchestra there. We uh, used about a hundred plus piece orchestra with, uh, I don't know, 40 member choir, uh, adult choir with about a 20, 25 member uh, children's choir. We actually uh, did multiple passes or tracks uh, 
with the orchestras and the uh, the choirs so that we could fill it out and even make it sound like it was even larger than it actually was, which it was already large, but now it sounds even larger. We, when we finished up the recordings at uh, Ocean Way, uh, we decided to come and do additional vocals at Blackbird Studios. When we finished the, uh, the vocals, we decided it was time to mix after we cleaned up all the tracks and then when we were done with the mixing, I took it back to uh, Black Mountain and uh, at my studio and did the mastering. I was really pleased with the finished product. I think that it, it sounds exactly the way I had hoped that it would turn out. I was so pleased uh, that it did capture the spirit of the composition and hopefully it hits everybody the way that it hit me and uh, inspired me. Psalm 46 is all about being still, being quiet, realizing what our place is. And then things start to move a little faster. She's got a section in which um, the daily events of life seem to, to propel things a bit faster. has that motion going forward. It's just a clarinet at the beginning, so we're gonna have Jack play a little bit of his beginning. Now, there are two clarinet parts here at the beginning, and so we uh, track one and then I track the second one. But I'll play a little bit of the, uh, the first clarinet part. Yes. This is the, uh, the chant that introduce, introduces, be still and know I am. <laughs> still and know I am, be still and know I am. and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, for the earth give way. And the mountains fall into the sea. Nations are 
My son, and I know he's talented, and I always love that part, but he kept telling me, he said, Ron, Daddy, Daddy, you've got to hear this. So you got to watch it. And uh, all of a sudden, I started listening to it. It came on, and I heard that orchestra, uh, and then the quality and everything that was involved. That, that's the first that got me. This was amazing. And I said, wow. I said, now, it made me kind of say, look, I want to hear hear more about this. And when she started, uh, when Peg started giving her testimony about how she wanted to help people, and I kept listening to it, and pretty soon I felt like my eyes were getting a little watered up. I said, man, my son's right. I, I heard about Psalm Space through my third cousin, Neil Blackwood, who is uh, a big part of this. I think he's the engineer, producer, and Neil uh, contacted me about uh, a month ago and asked me if I would be a part of it. I'm very impressed with, uh, with the dream and the idea uh, involved in, in, in Psalm Space. And I feel like it's, it's really needed in, in, uh, in America today. We were introduced to Psalm Space through Neil and Taryn. Uh, I guess we were in touch about a year ago. Since then, we've been wanting to work together on something, and then this project came to be, and uh, they got in touch with us, and here we are now. Yeah, I was just very excited to get involved with something where everyone is so dedicated to something so big. Um, yeah, so just the feeling of passion and the magnitude and all the people coming together to create something. I was ecstatic um, being an instrumentalist and you know, having a history with the orchestra, I was really super jazzed about coming here and meeting everyone and geeking out with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like really awesome for me. My favorite thing was probably filming on the bridge. Yeah. Uh, filming Peg on the bridge the other day. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was fun just to be intuitive with what we were capturing and uh, just follow you around, just be in the moment. And I think that is reflective of psalm space in general. I don't know if people are very aware, but on psalm space, I played the piano as well as the flute, but you didn't get to see very much piano footage of me. When I wrote psalm space, I made sure that the piano line was very fluid and it always had a motion in it. And in Psalm 62, you absolutely hear this. For instance, at the beginning. A little bit of syncopation. So it's all 
always running. There's always some interest in it. So it makes it kind of fun. And then I added Jack. I'm going to start at measure 33, honey. And come in. Truly, He is my rock and salvation. He is my fortress. 